When building a location-driven app, it's critical to be able to query data based on the current user's location. In this episode, we're going to use Angular Google Maps along with Firebase GeoFire to accomplish this task. The app will first detect the current user's location and then query Firebase for any items within a certain radius of that location. Then we'll display those items on the map along with their distance from the current user. To help us along the way, we're going to use the Angular Google Maps package, which includes several pre-built components and directives for common Google Maps elements. You can install it with npm install agm slash core flag save. From there, you need to go to the Google Cloud Platform console and enable the Google Maps API. Once enabled, you can generate an API key, and then we'll use that API key in the Angular environment. Here we already have Firebase configured via Angular Fire 2, and then we'll also add our Google Maps API key here. Then we can go over to our app module and we'll import the environment as well as the Angular Fire module and Angular Google Maps. Then we can pass AGM our Google Maps API key when we import it in the module. From here, we'll go ahead and create a new component to handle the map called Google Map. Then we need to give the map a CSS style. We want it to be full screen, so we'll just do 100 width and height. In the HTML, we'll wrap the map in a div so it only displays if the latitude and longitude is defined. Then we can use the AGM map selector and pass it the latitude and longitude as input arguments. This will define the center point of the map. Then we can nest AGM markers inside the map and display them at whichever coordinates we want. And if we want that marker to have a pop-up window, then we can add the AGM info window and we can transclude any HTML we want in here. So now we just need to get the current user's location. So we can do this in the component by defining a Latin longitude variable. Then during ng on init, we tap into the global navigator object and we call get current position. And this will return the user's current position, latitude and longitude on their browser or device. Now, if you go to the app and check it out, you should see the map centered on your current location along with a marker exactly where you presently are. Now that we have a basic map to work with, let's use GeoFire to query Firebase based on a GPS location. You can install it by running npm install GeoFire flag save. When you update the Firebase database with GeoFire, it saves a unique string along with the GPS coordinates for a location. This makes it possible to run queries in real time based on a given location's distance from these coordinates. Now let's create a service to interact with GeoFire. First, we'll import the Angular Fire database, and we'll also import the GeoFire library. And we're also going to use an RxJS behavior subject to save the ultimate results we get back from GeoFire. So I'm calling the results hits, and for now they're just going to be an empty array. To work with GeoFire, you need to send it a database reference of the location that you're working with. This can be done with Angular Fire 2 by calling dblist, and then passing that reference to a new GeoFire instance. First, we'll create a function to create new data using GeoFire. It takes the Firebase push key as an argument along with the Latin longitude in an array. And then we can call GeoFire.set and pass it the key and the coordinates. This will update the Firebase database in the proper format. The next thing we'll do is query data based on their presence within a radius in kilometers from a given set of coordinates. We do this by calling GeoFire query, pass it the center, which is the GPS coordinates, and the radius, that's how far out we want the query to go. Then we can listen to the key entered event, which occurs when Firebase has returned a relevant data point. It's going to have the key, the location and GPS coordinates, as well as the distance from the center of that circle. We'll go ahead and save this as our own data object called hit. Then we can get the current value from the behavior subject, append the latest hit to it, and then update the value of the behavior subject by calling next on it. Now let's go back to the component and inject the geo service into it. Then we'll display the hits from GeoFire as markers in the map. So since we have the hits as a behavior subject, we can just subscribe to them during ng on init, or you could also use the async pipe in the template to subscribe to them as well. Then we just need to tell GeoFire to make the query by calling geo.getLocations, and in this example we'll do it within a 500 kilometer radius. In the HTML, we can add another AGM marker inside of our AGM map, and this time we'll loop over it with ng4. And we can pass it the latitude and longitude for each marker, as well as a custom icon. Then inside the pop-up window, we can tell users exactly how far away they are in kilometers from any of these markers. 
Now, if we go into the app, we can see when we navigate up to the markers and click on them, it'll tell us exactly how many kilometers we are away from that point. That's it for Angular Google Maps and Geofire. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. And if you want to support the channel, consider becoming a pro member at angularfirebase.com where you'll get a free copy of my book as well as one-on-one -on -one project consulting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.